Even if you're occasionally browsing YouTube and watching videos, chances are that you've seen one of these Mr. Beast videos. It's a series of videos where he's visiting expensive places, with each video thumbnail consisting of him and a golden vehicle or building. So if you've ever wondered how he does it and wanted to add a golden touch to your own thumbnail elements, consider yourself lucky for stumbling across this video and clicking on it. If we take these two thumbnails with gold car and boat for an example, we can notice the following. Both vehicles are made of only two colors, black and yellow. They are very shiny, the contrast is really strong. The clarity and texture are also strong in some areas, but overall the vehicles appear super smooth and clean as a whole. So let me break down how I approach this edit. Here's the reference thumbnail, and here's the Lambo that will be turning into gold. It's not exactly the same car, but it's close enough. The first thing I'll do is I'll create a black and white gradient map. This is going to remove all the unnecessary color from the car. And later when I apply the gold effect, there won't be any irregularities. I'll move the white slider to the left, which should make the highlights of the car more intense. As I want this effect applied only to the car and not the whole image, I can clip the gradient map layer to the car layer. But since I'll be adding more adjustments, it would be easier if I created a group for all these adjustments instead. Now that I have the group created and selected, I'll make a selection of the car and then create a mask layer on the group. From now on, every adjustment that I create or add within this group will only affect the car. This gradient map may be a bit too strong, so I'll reduce its opacity to 50%. For organizing purposes, let's name this group Main. Now, to add the gold effect, I'll create one more gradient map. But this one can't be black and white, so I need to replace these black and white color points with yellow ones. Before starting with this recording, I went ahead and from the original Mr. Beast thumbnail, I extracted a palette of six colors, ranging from white to dark brown. These colors were sampled approximately from the reference image, and this range of yellow tones will allow for a handy color customization. I'll open the newly created gradient map and replace the black color point on the left with the darkest color from the palette, which is dark brown. Then, I'll click just below this slider here and it will automatically create a new color point, to which I'll apply the second darkest color from the palette. I'll repeat this step until I've added all six color points to the gradient map slider. Once I'm done with that, let's close the reference thumbnail and see what we're working with. Currently, this color is affecting the whole car and we do not want that. In your own edit, this is where you will have to manually paint the parts of the car that you want this gold color to be visible on. But thankfully, you don't have to watch me do that as I've created the selections before this recording, so I'll just load them into the project. Once I have the selection loaded and active, I'll create a layer mask. And here's the gold Lambo, but we're not finished yet. Before proceeding, I'll name the layers properly so I don't get confused. Unlike the gold Lambo from the reference thumbnail, in some areas this one looks a bit too dark. So to make it a bit brighter, I'll select and open the gold gradient map, and then move the sliders around until I'm happy with the result. Now this looks much better. To enhance the contrast of the whole car just a tiny bit, I'll create one curve's adjustment layer and create a very subtle S-curve. There's no need for these two layer masks, so I'll delete them to make the layers panel less cluttered. Next up, I'll create a hue saturation adjustment layer, delete the layer mask, and rename it to black. What I want to do with this layer is darken the windows and other dark areas of the car. And again, in your editing, this is where you're going to have to paint these areas manually. But with me being always prepared, I have the pre-selection ready to load. And if you're thinking there's a magic button to make highly accurate selections of areas you want to be selected, sorry to inform you, but there's no such thing. Some things just need to be done manually. Now that I have the layer mask applied, I should make some changes in the adjustment layer. I'm not sure why I moved this saturation slider to the left because the very first step I did was turn the car into black and white, so there was absolutely no reason for this. However, the bottom slider lightness has definitely made some difference. It's exactly what I was looking for. It's darkening all the dark areas, and most importantly, it's dimming the windows, which is exactly what was done in Mr. Beast's thumbnail. So far, this is all the difference we've made to the car, and you're probably good to go with this information and work on your own edit. But if you'd like to see a few more adjustments to make the edit even better, make sure to keep watching. To add more shine and clarity to the car, I'll take the original car layer and duplicate it. I'll name it Clarity, and then open the Camera Raw Filter. Inside the Camera Raw Filter, I'll move some sliders around. This will depend a lot on the image you're working with, 
but in this case, I just made the car a little brighter and moved the texture and clarity sliders almost all the way to the right. As you can see, this is affecting the whole car, but I want it to be visible only on areas where it's painted gold. To achieve this, I'll just copy the mask from the gold gradient map layer. I probably could have picked a Lambo without these lines on its body to resemble the shiny and clean Mr. Beast Lambo more, but for the tutorial purposes, it's no big deal. Now, I also want the windows to look a whole lot smoother, so I'll just duplicate this layer, remove the mask, and delete the camera raw filter. Then, I'll open the new camera raw filter and move the texture slider all the way to the left, and noise reduction slider all the way to the right. This will make the whole car look really smooth. But, as I said, I want applied only to the windows, so instead of painting manually on that area now, I'll do the following. I'll create an inverted layer mask. Then, I'll make the selection of the gold colored gradient map, invert the selection, and then finally, with a brush tool, I'll paint over the windows. Here's the before and after so far. Next up, I'll add the optional edits. Starting with hue saturation adjustment layer, in which I'll change the color to blue and then paint the lights with this color. Just like in the Mr. Beast thumbnail. These additional changes I'll add to new group, with the same layer mask applied to it. I'll then load the selection of lights and create a layer mask. And here you can see it colored the lights blue, similarly to the reference car. And now I'm going to add two more adjustment layers, which is going to help shift the car lighting. If we take a look at the reference thumbnail, the car is strongly lit from the front with its back being slightly darker. But in our example car, the situation is completely opposite. So to make the lighting switch in our edit, we need to dim the back of our car and lighten up the front. To tone down the highlights in the back, I'll just move this right slider inside the curves adjustment layer. As you can see, it's not affecting the back of the car. So to fix that, I'll take clarity and smooth layers from the first group and move them right above the original layer. This will fix the issue. On the newly created curves adjustment layer, I'll add an inverted mask, and with the white brush and low brush flow of 15%, I'll paint over the car areas where I want to tone down the highlights. To make front of the car brighter, I'll duplicate the curves adjustment layer, reset the edit settings, and then move the middle slider slightly up. And on an inverted layer mask, with the same brush settings, I'll paint over the areas I want to be brighter. And here's the before and after of these two layers. It's very interesting to point out how big of a change can two curves adjustment layers make. Hopefully, this easy technique will help you shift the lighting of your thumbnail elements when you need to do so. And here's the car before and after the gold effect added to it. After recording the car edit, I decided to make one more edit with a golden yacht. Here's just a quick breakdown of the editing layers, which are basically the same ones I used for the car, but with one added exception. This is the finished edit, and let's do a layer breakdown. But before we continue, I just noticed I named the layers Cruise, so my apologies on that grand mistake. This is the original image I started with. First, I applied a camera raw filter with the goal of making it look brighter since the reference thumbnail yacht was very bright too. Then, on a duplicate layer, I made a clean selection of the yacht. With this selection, I created layer masks on main and optional layer groups so that the adjustments can only affect the yacht. Then, with a gradient map, I turned the yacht into black and white. On top of that layer, I created another gradient map for the gold effect. I used the same color points as in the car example, but I moved them slightly around. Every image you work with will always be different, and you will have to play around with the adjustments until you get an acceptable result. In this example here, the yacht looks a bit too dark at the front, and by moving the slider to the left, I can light it up. Then, I used a hue saturation adjustment layer to color certain parts of the yacht black. Windows, poles, these circular lights on the side, bottom of the yacht, and other small details. If you take a look at Mr. Beast's yacht, these parts here are completely black. So, in order to do the same effect in my example, I just duplicated the latest hue saturation layer and moved the lightness slider to the left. Working on different adjustment layers for different parts of the image helps a lot when you need to further adjust the intensity of the colors, for example. So even if you can do everything on one layer, it's a good practice to work on multiple layers instead. And let's not even mention the destructive editing. For the second, optional group, I created the curves adjustment layer to enhance the brightness. Then I created another one with toned down highlights and I painted over this area because the highlights look just a bit too strong. Then, with yet another curves adjustment layer, I brushed over the front part of the yacht to make it brighter, 
and to match it more with Mr. Beast's. And for the very end, if you take a closer look at this pattern on the side here, you can tell it's a water reflection. It's very subtle addition, but it makes the yacht look a lot more realistic. So I took this stock photo of water reflection, changed its blend mode and reduced the opacity to 80%, and then added another curves adjustment layer, where I lifted the left slider up. Which in translation means that I made the shadows brighter. And as a gift from me to you for watching the video and supporting my work, I've included a free download link of 10 different gold gradients, which should help you speed up this editing process. And if you feel like this sort of thing will be useful in your edits and save you time, you can also get these other gradients in 8 more colors. And with each color offering 12 versions, including the gold ones, that's a total of 106 different gradients. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.